that you want to hear. So is it consistent with the scripture? Uh, number two, is it coming in the mouth of two or three witnesses? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have spiritual counselors, people that you can bounce something off of to, to make sure that what you're hearing is right or what you're interpreting is right? Because if, if the greatest prophet in the world came to you and gave you a, gave you a prophecy that was, that was against those things, then you need to reject that as being a false word. Yeah, even Paul or, said that. Uh, yeah, Paul said if an angel from heaven comes and preaches some other gospel to you, then let him be accursed. And we actually have the fruit of uh, false dreams that are that's afflicting our world today in Islam. That came as a result of false dreams and false visions by a man named Muhammad. And we've got now a whole world religion that is another gospel that came as a result of false dreams and visions. So it must line up with the Genesis to Revelation Word of God. And then there's got to be an inner witness of the Spirit. And then you've got to understand that there's a timing in everything for God. Mm -hmm. Just because God says, this is my plan for you, doesn't mean you do it tomorrow. God said, God gave a personal prophetic word to David, said, you're going to be king. He didn't go out the next day and have King David business cards printed and go around. <laughs> he spent 15 <laughs> years in a cave. <laughs> he sure did. He sure did. There was a process that God took him through in mm. order to fulfill his destiny. And so most of the time people get a prophetic word and they want to jump up and run out and try to cause it to be fulfilled. But many times God has a process to walk through and there's a process of faithfulness that he's looking for, just like he did with Joseph. Joseph had phenomenal prophetic dreams, but again, there was a long process that and he a, walked and through a before, term before it and a prison term actually, and the pit. We, we like to say uh, at Christian International that the pit means profit in training. And so... <laughs> So a lot of times, so when you find yourself in a pit, God's probably trying to Why train you. Why do we you. want to force it? We, we seem to want to help God along. And, and what's the difference between cooperating, believing in the Word, and trying to force the Word? Well, I think the Word has to be mixed with faith. You know, and so, and faith without actions obviously is dead. Faith without works is dead. And so there's usually something that you can do that can either, like if you feel called to the nations and you know God's spoken a prophetic word to you, that you're called to the nations. Some people want to run out and get their passport and that's fine. But your time for the nations may not be now, but you can start sowing into the nations. You can start having a heart for the nations. You can start praying for the nations. There's always something you can do now that can keep you on track until the fulfillment of that part of the prophetic word that God has and for And sometimes you. you have to learn the hard way. I, I, I know my father oh, talks about the, the hard lessons he had to learn. And, and uh, you know, those are, those are worth every penny you pay. Absolutely. And he got a word back in the 1960s about going to the nations, and he thought it meant now. And so mm -hmm. he started booking out travel and, and um, going to meetings, and it wasn't really time. Right. And he, he had to learn the hard way. No, it... You, you, you've got to wait. And, and, and now it just seems so natural and so, you know, of God. And, mm -hmm. and, but then it was hard and a struggle. And, and it, with God, it, all things are easy. <laughs> uh, my yoke is easy. My, my burden is light. <laughs> That's and, right. But the training process is not easy and, and, and being faithful in the middle of that. Well, and I think it's important that we learn to discern the voice of the Lord. Hebrews 5.14 says, it's those who by reason of use have their senses exercised mm -hmm. to discern between good and evil. And sometimes it's discerning between what's God's voice and what's our voice, what's a vision and what's a vision, <laughs> you know. How do you people know? get training in that? How, how, do you, how do you get practical application in listening and discerning and then applying that uh, in a real world situation mm -hmm. um, to, to know this, is, this was God and, and I can count on it? Well, I think that, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I think it's good to get yourself into a place where there is some practical training. I know at Christian International, that's one of our specialties that we bring people together. We do activations where we say um, we're going to give you permission to miss it. We're going to give you permission to listen to God, and, <laughs> if, you, if, and if you make a mistake, we're not going to take you out and stone you as a false prophet. We're going to give you some, some hands-on opportunities to say these are some different ways that you can learn to hear from God, uh, learn to, to test the voice of the Lord. We do what we call one-on-one -on -one activations where we'll just have people join together and, and let them listen to the Lord for somebody else. Because sometimes it's actually easier to hear God's voice for somebody else than it is for yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so we give them the opportunity to do that. And I know that there's times that I've received things from the Lord for somebody else that made no sense to me, but were so impactful to this other person's life. Was there any fear in that, in, in giving that, that, 
you know, God, do you really know what you're doing here? Absolutely. This sounds really crazy to me, and I'm Absolutely. going to look like a fool here. Absolutely. I mean, it actually, the, the whole scripture that we always quote about how God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind, it comes right after the verse that says, stir up the gift of God that's in you, which was given you with the laying on of hands. And then it says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. So I think that in moving out in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, nobody wants to be presumptuous and nobody wants to be wrong. And that's where I think that if we can maybe avoid putting God's name on it and saying, thus saith the Lord, until we really know that we're hearing from God, but just say, this is what I sensed, this is what I felt, this is what I saw. And we really recommend for people to really kind of keep it under a, a good kind of covering um, uh, in, in spiritual authority, not just to mm -hmm. run around prophesying to people saying the Lord said this or the Lord said that, but if you feel a word for yeah. somebody, you know, I, let somebody always, else witness that. I always am wary of the sort of the private prophet that wants to come and whisper in your ear. And, Absolutely. And that, so we have some safeguards in place that basically say if you feel that you have a word for somebody, take somebody else along with you that has some place of spiritual authority or put it on tape or write it down and submit it to the leader so that the leader can pass it on. And that's really for the protection of the person receiving the word as well as for the protection of the person giving the word because I've certainly been quoted as having given certain words that Didn't. I did not give. <laughs> that happens so, to you too, huh? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, if you're interested in more about how to learn, how, how to move into the prophetic, how to hear the voice of, of, of God, we encourage you to log on to cbn.com and we'll redirect you over to Jane's website and, and that whole page and how you can be involved in this and get training. Um, it's, I, I just think it's necessary now, more than ever for the, for the church, for the body of Christ, to be actively watching and listening for the voice of the Lord and discerning the times that we live in. And so much of that depends on our ability to be sheep and hear our master's voice. And if you want training in this, just go to cbn.com. Uh, Jane's also got a great book out on dreams and visions, uh, if you want to know more information about that. Uh, it's available in bookstores uh, across the nation, uh, so, so I encourage you to get it. It's a great book.